Hey everybody, this is Stephen from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. Now, before we get started, uh, there's a couple... Uh, 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 trades and hardcovers that came out uh, this past uh, couple weeks. Uh, I'm going to do a separate uh, review video because I think they deserve a little bit, uh, you know, time on their own. Uh, but I just wanted to point them out that they're available now at your local comic shop. Uh, first up is Galaxy, The Prettiest Star. Uh, it's uh, one of DC's young adult uh, graphic novels. I'm very excited to read it. Uh, uh, I've read a little bit. Uh, the art's amazing. But uh, I'll give a full review later. And the other one is uh, The Passageway uh, by, um, uh, it's by Jeff Lemire and uh, Andrea Sorrento. And it's uh, the first part of the, uh, the bone, arth uh, bone Orchard Mythos. So what it is is this hardcover is the first uh, part of it. Now, there's three separate. There, there's going to be this. There's going to be a... Uh, 12 part mini series and then another uh, hardcover now they are separate but they're part of this uh this uh universe so um once again uh those will though both those will be separate reviews because uh they just need a little more um in-depth review than than just like oh here it is so uh so anyways uh check those out uh they're they're both really really good uh but i'll give you a full report uh very soon so, uh, actually, it's a small week, but uh, uh, surprising. A lot of indie books this week. Uh, DC's pretty quiet this week. Uh, Marvel's got some stuff, but really, it's a big indie, indie, uh, indie week. So, uh, we'll get started. Uh, first off, uh, we have Sins of the Black Flamingo, number one. Uh, written by Andrew Wheeler, with artwork by Travis Moore. So, um, so what it is, is this this thief who actually uh he he's kind of like a it's kind of like a gay indiana jones where he goes and he finds uh uh ancient artifacts and things like that but what he does is he actually he it's it, like if somebody can't afford uh, to, to get it or they've had something stolen and they're not rich, he'll go get it for him for free. So it's kind of like he, he, he does these, he does look for artifacts on his own, uh, but he does this pro bono work. And so it, so the first, uh, the, this first issue sets it up, but it also, it, it gets into the story of him, uh, doing a, um, uh, he, he's doing, uh, he's, he sets up a thief where somebody has stolen, um, uh, an object that uh, needs to be recovered for this for this couple, and so he goes into this museum down in Florida, where it's kind of like not a real museum. It's kind of like a well, let's let's put it this way: it's a red state museum, and so he discovers that uh, th that not only do they have that, but there's other things when he goes down. Uh, to the basement uh, where there's no cameras, there's a bunch of uh, Nazi paraphernalia and stuff like that. Uh, so the other thing that's uh, really interesting is that he he's kind of also like a Robin Hood where, you know, he 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 doesn't so much steal from the rich, but he will because a lot of times they bought these artifacts and they uh, they hide them or hoard them and stuff. So. Uh, it's it's really quite interesting. I really like the premise. It's it's got a good setup. Uh, Wheeler does a really great job of of uh, doing uh, setting up everything in this first issue, but he does a good job of keeping the story moving along. So there's a lot of even though there's the exposition, it moves along quite nicely. So you don't feel like really just like it's just oh here here's this here's that there is that but it, it goes along with the story so i really have to give wheeler he he did a really good job and then you have travis moore's artwork he is just an absolutely stunning artist uh he he did um the uh the the wonder woman the death of wonder woman uh story over at dc he also did one of the uh uh one of the installments of uh, uh, in the DC Pride book. He's really a good artist, and he really just knocks it out of the park here. And he he just it's a really good looking book with a really great story. I really enjoyed it. It was it was one of my favorite books of the week. Um, I think it's really worth checking out, and I'm intrigued to see where uh, Wheeler and Moore take this from this first issue. It's really it was really quite good. Uh, next up, we have the Variants Number One, written by Gail Simone uh, with art 
artwork by Phil Noto. So what this is, this is a Jessica Jones story. And uh, once again, I haven't, I, you know, I've read a, a number of the um, uh, original series, uh, the Brian Michael Bendis, but I haven't read, I haven't really seen anything recently, but I think you can pick this up uh, as long as you know Jessica Jones, even if you know Jessica Jones, say from the, uh, the, 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 the streaming series, I think you can, you can pick it up because this, so what it is, there are variants of Jessica Jones. And so that's, that's what the story is about of, of how they all kind of are starting to come together. And, um, it, it really is, it's really interesting because, uh, Simone really sets it up nicely here. Uh, and you know, she explains things, you know, enough to get you going that her and Luke Cage are an item and all that kind of stuff. And really the big, the big win beyond a really good story and a for first issue setup is Phil Noto's artwork. He's really good artist. I really love his artwork and he really, uh, he really just brings a really nice touch to this story. And, and I think it's kind of interesting because, uh, I think Jessica Jones is a really great character and it really has, it really hasn't been used a lot lately. So I'm really glad that, uh, uh, Simone and, and Noto are, are doing this series because I think she's a really good character. And I think the other thing it's, it's kind of, you know, more, I mean, yes, yeah, she, kind of has you know superpowers but it's more of a detective story and you know i'm always a sucker for a good detective story so i once again i i like this first issue i think it's worth checking out uh next up we have uh agent of the world uh written by uh, uh dennis camp uh with artwork by flayla uh Br bratukin so what this is it's so you kind of have this agency that that goes they go after stuff and it's more like okay there's a problem with this or there's like a mad scientist and we need to go stop him or stop the project and so that's the basic premise here uh i think where i i, I struggle with the book is it 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 kind of tells a story but the story becomes a little com it becomes convoluted as it goes along it it kind of it, it gets it kind of overwhelms on itself where it, it, it it's kind of telling the story and then it just it, it keeps throwing stuff on and then it just gets really really com more complicated than I felt it need to be I mean I think the basic premise here is 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 pretty simple I think it was just kind of kind of overcooked I guess that's really the best way I mean it's it's not bad and and I think there's some really good ideas it just it really just was really uh, uh, inconsistent with the story where it just kind of, uh, uh, it, it got off the rails, uh, a number of times. And it's really kind of sad because I think the premise was really good. The really big, big, uh, surprise visually is, uh, Bratikin's artwork. It really is amazing. It's, it's almost, it, it's, and this is a compliment. It, it's very Jeff Darrow ish in the sense of the detail is absolutely amazing in it. And it, it's really a good looking book. And it's, it's kind of a shame because I think there's some really good ideas in the story, but I it just kind of, I just kept getting, I felt like lost where it, it just seemed, uh, really convoluted, which is really kind of a shame, but I, I might give the second issue a, a try because I think there's some good ideas. The question is, is it going to really be able to come together that I don't know. Uh, next up, we have Public Domain, written and drawn by Chip Zdarsky. Uh, so this is actually really uh, oddly timing. Uh, so what it is, you have a comic book creator who has created a comic and then Hollywood's making a movie. So he gets invited to the premiere and his sons are, uh, you know, one of them would can't go because he has to work. The other one just kind of blows him off. He's kind of the, the he, he, uh, he, he, he just does his own thing. He's, I, he's kind of the black sheep, but, um, and so he goes to the premiere and while he's at the premiere, he, he meets the, on the red carpet, he miss he meets the assistant of the, the, the producer, the guy who put the movie together. She's like a really big fan of the comic. She, she talks to him and, and, and so, so anyways, after, after the premiere, he, he, the creator goes back home she's looking for something for the producer. And then she discovers that 
he actually owns the copyright on the character. So that's what the basic story. And the irony is, is all this stuff is kind of timely because a lot of creators have come out uh, saying that, you know, they don't really get paid for, for characters they've created and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it's really a timely, but Zdarsky really, I, it, I've never seen, uh, I mean, he did uh, the artwork in Sex Criminals and stuff like that, but uh, this is just all him. And it's, it's really, it's really an interesting story. Like I said, it's very timely, but I really enjoyed it. So it'll be really interesting to see where he takes this story after this first issue. It was really quite, quite surprising, quite nice. The art is actually really nice. He's actually a surprisingly pretty good artist. So, uh, I think it's, I, I really, I enjoyed it. I think it's well worth checking out this week. Uh, next up we have Iron Cat number one. Uh, written by Jed McKay uh, with artwork by Pierre Perez. So what this is, so it, so you have Black Cat. She's she's doing a job and everything, and then it there's this Iron Cat that kind of comes out of nowhere. So we don't quite know, and I'm not going to spoil who Iron Cat is. So what it is is there's the present day, and then it goes back to when Black Cat is younger, when she's an apprentice of this master thief. So she. Um, her and, her and another girl are like apprentices of him. And so it, it kind of goes back and forth and how the past ties to the present. So that's the that's the basic setup here in this first issue. Um, I wasn't necessarily overwhelmed. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is great. But I will say it has, it, McKay does, has a solid story. It's it's a lot of fun. The artwork is by Perez is really, really amazing. Actually, I thought... Because he does kind of two different styles. When there's uh, he's in the past, it has one style, and then the present has another style. But I will say the the past uh, style is just really gorgeous. It's it's really wonderful, and and it does kind of set up. A, it's it's a fun superhero book. Like I said, it's not necessarily something that's going to overwhelm you, but it's 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 got a decent story. It's got really nice art, and it's it's fun. So if you're looking for something, uh, especially since this is really the first appearance of Iron Cat, who is it's it's a basically stolen. Uh, uh, or, or modified uh, Tony Stark armor is really what it is. And and like I said, it's fun. It's not deep or anything, but if you're looking for something light, it, it works pretty well. Uh, next up, we have Mindset number one, written by Zach Kaplan with artwork by John Pearson. So what the, the, the so the basic premise is think of like the so, social network film where you know the guys in college and they end up creating Facebook. This is like this, but thing there's already been things that set up. So this one kid is working with a group and he he actually is not going to graduate because he missed one uh, a number of tests in one class. So what what they what they have to do in the, in 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 this college is they they present an app to try to you know is this something like you know that that can be you know a huge thing, and so what it is he ends up creating uh, him and his team create this uh, this app that H actually becomes you can it's like you can take over people's minds so it's it's really it's kind of interesting because it is in a lot of ways, social networking has kind of taken over things in some respects. It did people act crazy and crap on social networks. So, um, I think it's an interesting story. Um, Kaplan, he, he, he does a good job. Uh, it's a lot of exposition in this first issue, but it, it does move along pretty nicely. Uh, Pearson's artwork's actually really nice. It's, it's a pretty solid, pretty solid book, uh, from vault. And, um, um, I, I think it's interesting. I think the, the key is where where is the story going to go from here? Because it's a good setup. The question is where where are you going to take it from here? But overall, I think it, it's it's a good start to to the story. Uh, next up, uh, Batman Fortress number two, uh, written by Gary uh, Wada, uh, with artwork by Derek Robertson. So we have the first of all, Superman's MIA. Nobody knows where he is. So Batman gets. Most of the Justice League, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Hawkman, Flash, uh, I think that's it. So what it is, is so this alien invasion, they've taken 
uh, they've taken kind of like computers and everything are offline. There's no electricity and stuff like that. So what it is is the uh, the all all the nations get they decide to send planes up to try to. Um, you know, destroy the aliens. Well, it, it doesn't go well. But Batman's still trying to figure out what, what this is. Is this an attack? I mean, it seems to be an attack, but really is an attack where they haven't said what they want. And it, it's really interesting. Um, like The first issue was interesting. I think the, the second issue does, uh, uh, Weta does a nice job of building on that first issue. There's some uh, some nice... Uh, uh, setups here in the second issue to kind of keep the story momentum going. Um, and then, of course, you have Robertson's artwork. Uh, he's really most famous for working on The Boys. Uh, but he's actually done a number of, a uh, couple DC books recently. And he's, re he's really a wonderful artist. It's, it's really a good looking book. And I like the, the fact that even though this is yet another Batman book, and we got two more coming down the road, uh, <laughs> that... Um, it, it, it's something, it feels different. Um, I, I think it's also, uh, you know, with, with the fact that it's, it's Batman being a detective trying to figure this out. That is always a good angle to go with. Um, it, it's, it's a, it's a fun little book. Like I said, it's, it's an interesting story. There's a neat twist at the end, uh, with the aliens coming down, looking, they are looking for, for, uh, uh, Superman. So we, they don't even know where he is. So that really, that brings up an interesting question that nobody knows where Superman is and why they're actually here, but he has, he has some key to this story. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's fun, great artwork. Uh, but yet yeah, it's another Batman book. So if you're Batman out, then I don't know, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, next up we have 8 billion genies. Number two, um, uh, written by Charles Sewell, uh, with artwork by Ryan Brown. Now, I really, really enjoyed this, uh, this, this, the first issue on this. So what it is, is all of a sudden there's a genie for everyone on earth. Everybody gets one wish. So of course, uh, so there's the, there's this bar, uh, there's, there's people in the bar. So the bar, bar, uh, the barkeeper, the owner, says that anybody who makes a wish outside the bar does not affect anything inside the bar. Basically what he has done, he's created kind of like a safe space. So even like, let's say somebody becomes a dinosaur, they come into the bar, they're going to turn back into the regular person because that's what, that was what they were before they asked for the wish. Now that does not happen in the book. I'm just giving you an example. So... <laughs> So what's interesting is, so there's that, that was, so in the first issue was great, great because people just went batshit crazy asking for stuff. And you still see that this issue, but we're kind of seeing where the, the people in the bar, because, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the people asked to, to fall in love with the guy and she blew her wish because she said it in the bar. So she didn't have a wish anymore, but you have the other people that are like really taking their time to ask you know, Hey, what do I, what do I really, I have one wish. And I think the other interesting thing we see in this issue is we, we have some interaction with, with the genies. They actually tell their story of why, kind of why they're here. Uh, and, and they also explain some rules that we didn't quite know. Uh, so that's an interesting, uh, uh, uh twist to the story. Uh, it, it's really intriguing. I, the concept here is brilliant. Uh, it's Sewell is just really, uh, it, it's playing up quite nicely. I'm really enjoying this. And, and, uh, Brown's artwork is really nice. I really like this. I love his little genies. I think at this point we all want a little stuff version. I hopefully maybe someday if somebody will make one, but it's really, uh, it, it is you know, partially like the monkey paws tale. It's like, be careful what you wish for, but also you can, you can wish for something good in there. Uh, you, you kind of see that at this issue. So we're starting to see like, you know, that, you know, people, people make good wishes, people make bad wishes, and then there are consequences to both. And, uh, so it'll be interesting to see, but the second issue really keeps the momentum going. And I really, really love this book. It's really highly recommended. Definitely. while well we're checking out, uh, next up, we have Batman beyond the white Knight Number four written and drawn by Sean Murphy. So Batman, it, it was in jail. Uh, so he's out now he broke out. 
Uh, so we have a new Robin from from basically the military uh, Gotham police. And uh, so now we're starting, things are starting, the, 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 the things that have it, Murphy has set up in the first uh, three issues are starting to come together where uh, uh, Terry McGinnis were, you know, his father died uh, and, and the guy who's kind of running the city uh, saying, hey, you know, your, your dad was killed by Bruce Wayne, blah, blah, blah. So we're starting to learn what what is is kind of the, like the, we're we're starting to see things bubble up, where uh, the Joker's Joker's daughter because he he had a daughter with Harley Quinn she's she's now in the mix because she ran away from home so we don't quite know how she's going to fit in the story. We have uh, Terry McGinnis who is somewhat being brainwashed in just thinking that his that Bruce Wayne killed his dad, which we're pretty sure that didn't happen. Uh, and then Barbara Gordon is kind of running with the, the, the new Robin to really find out what's going on within this whole thing. So that's what we're really starting to see here. And it's really coming together quite well. I'm a big, big fan of these uh, Murphy White Knight uh, series and they, they just they're all really really good and now there is going to be a spinoff uh, a two issue spinoff of the Red Hood uh, that spins out of this issue uh, that'll it can that'll that'll tell that story and then I guess that will come back into this so you might want to keep an eye out for for that uh, that two issues when it comes out I believe it's uh, this month or next month. Um, next up, we have Ghost Cage, number three, uh, written by uh, Nick Dragata and Caleb uh, Goliner, with artwork by Nick Dragata. So this is the final issue. So we have, uh, so once again, the, the, the power has been destroyed. Uh, Sam, who has was created to, uh, base, it's, it's interesting because the bad guy created him to go into the power. So each level of the power, like there's gas, there's coal, and, and stuff like this that he's been battling. And we ultimately find out that he was actually sent there to basically build up energy to, for the final level, which is the solar level. And so that that is where the, the that it now so we find out that the bad guy actually wanted Sam to go in and defeat them so he could power up so he could do this one thing that the that the bad guy needed and so that's where and it all comes together at the end it's just the this is the end of the story uh it's interesting because uh his, the 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 villain's daughter is involved and we find out about her mom and how she died and how it, how they were related with the villain and all that kind of stuff it, re, it was really quite interesting and then we once again we find out really what sam's lot in life what he's he's intended to do and yet it's it's one of those things that things are things kind of go the way but then things uh shall we say turn out well i don't want to give, give too much away but this has been really interesting Dr dracata once again, this is a really interesting story. I love the fact that it's in black and white. I really think that that has added a lot to this series. And and just the story was really good. The artwork was really nice. And it was really a good, solid story. Uh, it, it, it just, it we really, I, I think the interesting thing is how how all the, the pieces of the puzzle fit together when you didn't really realize how, that they were actually fitting together. That was, I think, one of the most interesting things about the story. Well, we're checking out, but if you've missed it, I know there's going to be a trade of it coming out soon. So definitely, definitely check that out. That was really interesting. Something very different. Uh, next up, we have Batman Catwoman number 12, written by Tom King and uh, with artwork by Clay Mann. So this is basically the story that Tom King was going to tell after Batman 50, where Batman and Catwoman were going to get married. They did not get married. And there was reasons for that. And that's what this 12 issue miniseries was. It was really going to be that the the story that was led out of issue 50 now it did happen be because he never got to he never got to finish the story in the batman run so that's what this book is so ultimately you kind of needed to read at least issue 50 but then you really needed to read but 
the ultimate key here is, and this is not giving anything away, because really the story isn't, it's not really about them getting married. It's about the story leading up to them getting married. And that's the key to the, this story. And it, it, this has been a really solid book. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that, uh, that they not only when they, uh, put this out in a trade that they include the the stories that led up to that the, like because there were a number of stories because he started the story and never finished and then he's gotten to finish it here and it, it really was it really was a good ride because it wasn't just about them getting married it was really about them it was about the characters the joker played a big part it was really it was really interesting i have to give it to king i'm glad he was able to finish his story because i think once you read this, then you understand what he was leading up to that he never got to finish. So I'm glad he got to finish it. Clayman's done a really good job. It's a really good looking book. Um, like I said, I would wait and hopefully they'll put it all, the whole storyline in not only the 12 issues, but the ones that led up to it in the regular Batman series. So fingers crossed, that's hopefully what they'll do. But otherwise, this this mini series has been really good. It did stand on its own. Um and and like i said i enjoyed it uh and finally this week we have swamp thing number 14 written by ram v uh with artwork by mark mike perkins so once again it, it's really i can't I, to try to explain i have to explain like 13 previous issues of this just i will say this that this book really is amazing ram v continues to just blow my mind with this book and What's really interesting about this particular issue, and we we saw it last issue, is that Green Lantern gets in, uh, is involved, and it's it's really intriguing how he has fit him, him into the story because this is not like a superhero story, but yet it it makes so much sense how he put why Green Lantern is actually there, and it so it's really I have to give Ram V that that is really just a smart move and. Um, Perkins continues to just really the artwork on this book is absolutely incredible. I I really I cannot recommend this book enough. The really there is a trade of the first uh first season because this is season two. What we're uh, th so we got two more issues of that. Hopefully they'll collect the whole thing. But either way, go back get the trade of the first one. Definitely check it out. Um, uh, and if if you can you can get the trade and pick up uh the the because uh, that was the first 10 issues so this is uh the back six so if you can find them read them this book is really really good it's really uh it's really under the radar on a lot of people but i really really you should be checking this out uh it's great story and it's just stunning artwork that's going to do it this week uh thanks for watching as always uh, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics in Long Beach, California. Uh, Ryan runs a great store. There's Annie, Eduardo, uh, Wendy, Derek. Uh, really good crew. Great comic store. Uh, they have a great pull service. Um, and uh, they offer discounts on trades and uh, graphic novels every day. Uh, they have just a really good selection. If something, they can order it if it's available. Uh, there, if you live in the, uh, LA, uh, more of the LA area, there is uh, Pulp Fiction Culver City, same, uh, same name, different owners, uh, Chris and her team, uh, run that store. Uh, once again, another great local store. Uh, they offer great pull service discounts. Uh, well, we're checking out in the, in the LA area, if you're in the Long Beach area, uh, two really great stores. I, like I said, I go to the Long Beach store and Ryan's really just amazing guy. Um. And as always, we end our show with please be kind. Uh, I know things are really tough for everybody on many different levels, but uh, and uh, just with all the news lately, I, I know it's it's really hard out there, uh, both men physically, mentally, and just spiritually at a point. Uh, just please be kind. Uh, I know we all have different opinions on things. We have we're we're all different creatures, but being kind is something we all have and we can all do. Uh, so just take care of yourselves out there. Uh, that's going to do it this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, and just take care of yourselves. Uh, this is Stephen from Pop Culture Maven signing off. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. All right, bye bye.